I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, please go check out the link in the description for some awesome TGS merch. Hey guys, welcome to The Gunshot. We have Nick Horton from Langston Wildfowlers here with us today. Uh, Nick is a Ely representative. Non-toxic non, non shot ambassador, I, th I think is the technical term. Okay. And he has brought some Ely Pro Eco wads along to test. You would have seen yesterday, we did a quick review of the Game Ball Fiber Shot Cup 3 inch. And so today we're looking at the other major, easily available, completely green cartridge. Here and here they are. Indeed, here they are. And I, I'm looking forward to some of our um, sort of moisture tests, which are severe in the extreme. Um, let's see how they come through that and what the cartridge performs like on a pattern plate. That should be good. So to start with, what is the cartridge made up of? Well, a, a brass that's not made of brass, so it will rust away. A, I believe, recyclable hull. It is a recyclable hull, there's it, no it, belief about yes. it. It is a recyclable it, yeah. um, outer. You have standard Ely powders. The wad itself. Ely haven't told anyone what this wad is actually made of. And they haven't told me either. Uh, best guess is, is that it is some kind of polyvinyl alcohol bit like a fishing bag kind of thing and certainly the way it reacts when it's put in water if we look at this this has been in for about five minutes and it is already is already in a state of squidgy delight is or it that's a good guess um what the other components are nobody really knows yet but that's my presumption is predominantly that yes um, the, the only just to make this a point early on in the in the proceedings that uh, one of the, if I go back a step, as, as a wildfowler, I have significant experience of using ordinary cartridges, uh, indeed going back to the days of lead and even to the days of paper cased cartridges, um, in extremely damp uh, and, and hostile conditions. Um, many of the American manufacturers have done this in the past, but this is the first time I've seen this on an Ely cartridge, which is that the crimp is heat sealed. It used to be on the Winchester Double A's every yes. single one was, and that's why they, well, I presumed they kicked like buggery. It's, that, that's an interesting thought. We'll find that out in due course. I, I, I do know that at the moment, uh, because these are Maxam um, components, Owned, yeah. a, a large sort of European um, Ammunition Own manufacturing, Rio amongst others, and, exactly. Yeah. Yes, um, they are in fact loaded in Spain. Um, and one of the reasons that they're loaded in Spain is because of the sensitivity of the wad to moisture. So it's so it's loaded in the driest environment. Loading it in miserable wet Birmingham might not it, be the best idea. It, whether it, whether they will um, whether that will prove to be less of a problem than was initially um, post postulated, or whether they will make the necessary adaptations to the building to make sure that at no point are they stored in a damp environment, only time will tell. But um, th they are, of course, slightly more expensive than um, th than some of their ordinary steel um, uh, counterparts. But when you look Around at the... Around £400 pound a thousand, something. Yes, I mean, you, there's two ways of looking at that. There's a huge amount of, of R&D that, that somebody, the customer, has got to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, and B... There's a there's an awful lot of in, environmental concern in many quarters about uh, the, the 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 placing of, of unrecoverable plastic into the environment, um, and if that the, if those few extra pounds is the cost of it, um, perhaps for securing uh, a future where that is not something that we can be attacked over, it's probably worth it. I would agree with you wholeheartedly that there's a little bit of extra greenness is worth a couple of quid. Given that from your perspective of wildfowling you're going to shoot a handful of cartridges and given my perspective of, of more game shooting side of it is that game shooting is not that cheap to add an extra couple of pence to your cartridge cost is not killer. No. So in front of us we have cut open a 32 gram 3 but we also have some 32 gram 5s to test. Again you can see on the end there the crimp which is heat sealed. Things that we're going to cover today, apart from what we've just done, is we have put one of the wads in water to see how quickly it dissolves, and the answer is extremely. We've put one cartridge into water, but without the primer cap covered so that we don't get water ingress into the powder. And we're going to probably shoot that if we're feeling brave. More importantly, we have this. Um, Nick 
took out three cartridges with him while fouling for the last few sessions in wet and nasty conditions and we've cut one of them open to see after three sessions it's three three trips to the foreshore my at the end of the day when i come home um not only am i a, an obsessive gun cleaner but my cartridge belt is is hung up in a in an outbuilding but it is heated um so they've not had any special attention but they've been looked after i have my own thoughts now just having a little play with them what's your first thoughts between uh, that I, uh, that being the well the, the the dryer of the two my understanding is that they are quite sensitive to moisture in the air and bearing in mind at the moment that we've, we've got 100% humidity outside in that it's peeing with rain. Um, I'm, I'm interested like you to see how those other cartridges perform. So the only thing that I can see between the two is this is noticeably, and I mean not noticeably like noticeably, I mean just, it, it is a little bit softer actually when you push your finger in it's yes. broken two of the divides seeing as it's been out three times and this one's a little bit stiffer but its integrity is all there. Yeah. We should be fine anyway. Some of those little uh, bonds will break very quickly. <laughs> Indeed they will. And, and again, I mean, we're, we're into uncharted territory with, um, with, with, with this particular type of ward. It might be, for instance, that the, the way to go would be to buy your ammunition in, in smaller batches and, and store it very carefully so that it was used more quickly rather than yeah. sitting around particularly if it's stored in less than ideal conditions for two or three years, for, for two or three years. Yeah. actually taking a little care we'll be just a harking back to the older days like you were saying about paper cases that you can't just leave paper cases in a wet cartridge bag come back the next no. time and expect them to work no uh, for comparison here is just a regular plastic wad and here is an Pro Eco draw the conclusions that you will you have an obturator at the back very similar it is slightly different in its construction, but that's largely to do with the uh, case this was drawn from as opposed to this. This had a lot of extra room for the load that was in it as opposed to this. The bonds are the same, the thickness is the same, the gaps in the walls are the same. In fact, I'd probably say this is a little bit thicker than this, mm. in the wall thickness anyway. Yes. Just an interesting comparison really. Uh, I'm not entirely sure performance wise, they say it's just the same as plastic, but every plastic one performs differently, so it's kind of a hard thing to say. That's we'll, we'll get some indication uh, subsequently on the on, on the pattern plate. Just just a touch momentarily yeah. on, on on what you mentioned a moment ago about paper cases. Uh, I, I'm old enough to have started my wild fowling career in the in the very early days of, um, of of the availability of plastic cases, um, and I kind of cut my teeth on on, on paper cases. Um, Paper cases for wild fowling are a complete pain in the backside. Um, you have to manage them far more carefully than we've been used to doing for the last, you know, 30 or 40 years with with, with standard plastic ammunition. Uh, it needs to be, <clears throat> for instance, if you read the old wild fowling books going back and from, from the sort of the, the, the 20s through to the to the 50s and 60s, the advice was to carry your cartridges in. The, the most common, um, co most commonly described item was a sponge bag, the, the sort of bag that you would use when you when you go away to stay in a hotel to put all your all your washing utilities in it because it's because it's waterproof and got a, a, a draw cord at the top. Probably been superseded nowadays by Ziploc plastic bags, but that was the sort of degree to which you would have to husband your your ammunition. Now there there are many generations of shooters who've, who who were used to doing that. The, the, it, it's only in, in recent years that we've gone away from the concept of looking after all the individual components of your sort of shooting ensemble, including the guns, because we've moved away from um, from a, a situation where stuff needed to be looked after to to one where, particularly with guns as well as modern cartridges, frankly you can neglect it almost entirely, and it will keep performing. And it'll, st it'll, it'll keep performing. And just more of an indicator of the times we live in a much more throwaway society. 
all of this stuff is more attainable than it's ever been. Yeah. So if you do break your 300 quid pump, you go and buy a new one. Yeah. You ruin your cartridges, buy a new one. Ruin your jacket, buy a new one. It's not proportionally to your wages no. as significant as it was even 20 years ago. Yes. So we, we might be looking at, at something here which is a very large circle. Um, what we're buying is um, is we're buying into the uh, into the ecological thing. We're we're actually spending money on the on the long term future defence of the sport. But it might be, and we'll have a clearer indication at the end of these tests, that that is possibly at the expense of a little more complication in the management of our ammunition. Indeed. And I mean no offence to Ely when I say this, but I I view this as a huge stepping stone. This obviously isn't going to be the end product. This is not what we're going to be using in ten years. I mean, it might be, but I, I, this is the first step into a bio cartridge, if yeah. you like, that is commercially available, more importantly. So it's going to be really interesting to test it out and, more importantly, see what comes over the next months, years, that's going to compete with this. Yes. Because, as we know, lead is being viewed very harshly at the moment, and potentially rightfully so, depending on which side of the fence you sit on, and steel will become more prevalent on... For, for everyday people as opposed to just the, the specialist yeah. wild prowlers yes. as time goes on. So this is something everyone should be paying attention to, not just dog shoes, I guess. Right, this has now been in for 10 minutes. Uh, you can see actually it's starting to break down nicely. All those edges and everything are, well, it's coming apart, it's coming apart. And I have read conflicting science about the toxicity of it, but... Taste anything? Tastes like the tap what we get here at the moment. Would whiskey improve it at all? Well, it's got, it's polyvinyl alcohol, so I okay. presume it's good for you. <laughs> That's okay then. <laughs> so what we're gonna do actually is I'm gonna chuck this in there for a short period whilst I cut this open and we'll have a little look at the results thereafter. Given that this cartridge has been in that pot of water longer than this wad has been in this cup, it's going to be interesting to see about water ingress. Because, although they do say to put a blob of grease on the end or put them in a Ziploc plastic bag, the chance of me ever doing that as a person, and ergo your average shooter ever being bothered to put grease or put them in a plastic bag, is going to be minimal. Most people will open the box and put them in their pocket. Because most of us, unlike Nick, unfortunately, were not brought up in a time when you had to look after your stuff. Anyways, this is going to be very interesting. So the powder is dry, that was the whole point in this test. Let's have a look. It's the top of the cartridge is going to get affected first. Well, it's most definitely wet. Whether well, that's just the mark it's going in now, it's, you know, it's definitely lost a little bit of integrity and it is sticky in itself. Yes. That is what putting one of these in water for 20 minutes will make it mildly sticky. But it still pushes out of there the same as the dry one did. And we will find out if they perform the same. It's got there's just that little bit more. I can see it, yeah. Sticky sponginess to it. So water ingress is a problem if you leave them underwater for 25 minutes. Yes. However, <laughs> taking them out in the rain three times and they're they're fine. Yes. And and you know I, th I think there's a there's a there's a happy point somewhere in between those two extremes. <laughs> and even then. I'd happily shoot this. And I know we said we're going to shoot it and we will shoot this other one, but it actually, for science, is more intelligent to look at it. And it is. Yeah, it is. There you go. Sticky. You can, you can hear it's almost turned rubbery. Status update half an hour. That water has almost actually turned sweet, which would allude to some starchy content in the water. But it doesn't taste unpleasant. It doesn't taste toxic, but toxic things rarely do, right? No. <laughs> All right. Indeed. <laughs> Let's go shoot some cartridges. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these shots from 35 yards, which is a good, sensible killing range for a steel shot cartridge, even though you can push them out a little bit further. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lead with the cartridge we left in the water. Because it was hoofing it down with rain and it is now sunny, uh, we took a little break and filmed a podcast. This has actually now been in the water for an hour and 20 minutes. It's been out for about 15. And we're chucking it in about the only gun I'm going to trust shooting a cartridge like this, even though I'm 98% sure I'm going to be fine. Uh, Benelli Supernova. Half a choke. Modicum of bravery. Yeah.
and it's all gone. There's no residue of wad in there. All in all, a success. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a non-wetted one through at the next target. Just have a little look at the difference. Uh, it's a 32 gram three that we'll be putting through this and we'll test the 32 gram thrice through a different gun in a sec. All right, next target in. Nick rightfully pointed out that actually we need two normal ones so that we can get a gauge for consistency. I'm not on a catching them today. <laughs> I mean, the results on that, the only thing I will say is that first one kicked a little bit more. Yes. Uh, which I'm <clears> guessing you're going to get because it probably, if it swelled, swelled a little bit over the last hour and a bit, you're going to get a little bit more back pressure. Yeah. Yes. But the pattern is exceptional. <laughs> that's an extremely good pattern for, with, with number three shot and in a cartridge that's been soaking for over an hour. Yeah. Uh, with us, what that is completely water soluble, <laughs> yes. you know? I mean, it's a dead duck, it's a dead anything. Yeah. You've got I'll a be... tiny little hole down the bottom, but... Well, yeah, when don't you get that? Yeah, you're always going to get something along those lines, but actually that's an exceptionally good pattern. And the others, if we're looking at a cartridge for pattern at that sort of distance, I mean, you'd happily shoot anything and it would just... Yeah, and as is often the case with these, you just spin the plate round for a minute. Now look at that. Yeah. Yeah, again, a little bit of a hole there, but anything else... For number threes, that's it's a brilliant pack. Through through it's a extremely tight as well. Yeah, and that nice. was through yeah. that was come on, brain. That was the half choke. Half choke in that one. Yeah. Yes, I would be extremely happy using a cartridge that did that on the foreshore. After the M2, we might step out a little bit further, see what they do do at range, because we all take shots at ranges that are perhaps less optimal. Yeah. So it's wise just see what it actually does. Yes. And the final pattern is, I can't, I can't see issues. No, not at all. The only thing, like I said, the, the recoil was noticeably a little bit more. Yeah, okay. But let's put a baseline that you shouldn't leave your cartridges underwater for an hour. No, and expect them to. And expect them to perform. <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, I've, I fired a couple of these um, last Friday, which admittedly is a week ago, but I have a the, the sort of, you know, the muscle memory of the recoil of those cartridges through my SBE2, which is quite a light gun, yeah. particularly by comparison to that, um, to the Supernova. So I shall be intrigued to feel what I feel in a moment when we, when we try the others through mine. Yeah, 100%. All right, we're now on the SBE2 with the fives. I'll let you have the others, see what you think. Certainly no worse, and why it would have been, I don't know, than when I, when I fired them the other day. It's, they, they punch. They are not a light, gicky cartridge, but they are a 32 gram load. It's, it's a 32 gram load in a, in, in a wad that has more substance to it than many others. I don't think they kick any more than no. some other brands. They just kick more than others. Than, than, a, than a lighter cartridge, perhaps. Mid-range mid recoil. Yes. And it and will be interesting later to actually put them against those game ball fibres and do a complete side-by-side -side comparison and over and under and, and feel the difference. Yes. So, that's empty. Let's go have a look. Thoughts? Less consistent than the threes. Yeah. Yeah, more patchy than the threes. The threes actually were really good. I know it's a different gun. I mean, I say that. It's a good killing. Uh, actually, yes. look at it. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's do that. Let's let's not worry about the, the the pheasant. Now, I think you get a different perspective. I mean, there's certainly areas of higher density, but I think that's about the most perfect pattern you could ask for, right yeah. there, that yes. last shot. With 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 a number five shot, I see no problem with that at all in the field. At 35 yards, it's a it's guaranteed death. The only reason yeah. that you would not be pulling birds down with these would be user error. You're stretching not... your legs and user error. Yeah, Just yeah. catch them in the edge of your pattern. Yes, you're not pointing it in the right direction. And and as far as the recoil goes, on reflection, um, I've I have fired 
cartridges with a much more brutal recall than that oh, hell in, yeah. in the past. Um, that, curiously enough, was more akin to firing a black powder gun, where you get a significant push from the cartridge, but yeah, it's, it's not but painful, it's, it's just it's yes, a shunt. Yes, exactly. I wonder if that is developed differently to work with the wad. I, I don't know, but as we've said before, um, a, a lot of shotgun in particular, cartridge ballistics, is, is more about chemistry than it is anything else. And it's possible, I'm sure, to you know, fiddle around with the, with the ratios of components to get a number of um, different results from it. I mean, I mean, as you know, I'm sure, before they went down the route of developing steel ammunition in this country and, and in Europe, the concept of having high velocity with relatively low pressure seemed almost unobtainable. Mm. But it was only by messing around with the, with, with the cartridge chemistry that they've achieved that, which is why modern steel cartridges are as successful as they are. So again, I, I'm, my teeth aren't rattling, um, the fillings haven't fallen out, and the pattern in both number three and number five... It's no different to shooting a VIP lead 32 gram. They are inherently no. a kicky cartridge because it's 32 grams going at some speed. Yes. But good killing patterns. Yeah. Right, you, you can't ask I'm, for more consistency. I'm, 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 and certainly by comparison to the game board, they have that consistency edge. Yes. Yeah. They do have that consistency edge. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's go and take a shot from 55 yards. Yeah. Um, we'll chug it through the over and under. Okay. Why not? And then at the same time, we'll do a direct comparison actually. We'll both take both of our shots, we'll shoot at 55 yards, one, one shot with the game ball and one shot with the Ely. Yep. Recoil pattern. Have a look. Yes, is the answer to that. Let's start with an Ely through a top barrel, quarter choke. This is just a standard Beretta through the right. And then one of these. Uh, we've got one three and one five of the Ely's to test and the game balls are fours. Direct recoil comparison. I'll let you shoot before I before you say any conclusions. Mm, I think I could see a conclusion. I've shot the two right ones. Two right ones. Now that bit. Not excessive, but more. Different as well. Uh, yes. I think, like you say, this is a real shunt, and this is more of a punch. More of a hoof, isn't it? These Game Ball shells smell funny too. Not that it's a bad thing. You smell that, smell that. They do smell different. You can... Mm, they do. Mm, sure. draw, right, draw conclusions as you will, but they smell different to your standard five or car. I've sniffed a lot of cartridges in my time. Um, the Game Ball do kick more, but everybody always said they kick about 50 times as much. It's, it's 10%. Yeah. But it's, and, it's there, but it's not... You wouldn't not shoot them all day. No, not horrendous by any no, means. No, it's not like shooting. And, and more different than excessive. Yeah, it's just a very different feeling. Whereas those Ely's are... I was going to say, I think by the end of the day, you'd, you'd feel like you'd shot 32 ground fives or 32 ground threes all day regardless. So let's go have a look. Yeah. This was the, the right hand one. Yes, yeah, so this was a... Ely, then a game ball. Yep. They're both pretty good. I mean, you, you can't pick pick any holes in either of them, really. No, at that at that range, I I wouldn't want to place one above the other. No, they're both sort of equally as 55 yardy. And if you flip it round back to the pheasant, both dead birds. Yeah. Good solid dead birds. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Do you reckon that's you or the cartridge? That's on that probably one? me. That gun really didn't fit. No, it's separate, isn't it? It's good for lesser men. Indeed. <sighs> um, Num number th these were both number threes, were they? Uh, I forgot. Yours was a number five, and yeah. that's a number four. Okay. So that was a three on the first shot, and you had the five. Yep. I would say that the game board probably has it on that one. 
just a little bit, but neither pattern is perfect. No. But that I'm, has two big holes in it. Yep. And, <sighs> and I'm just, I'm just curious that, uh, what's the choke on that? Quarter. Yeah. The quarter choke. I'm just sort of searching to think why there might have been a difference in that in as much as those two are quite, you know, given the parameters. I, I do I, feel like it's kind of part and parcel of certainly the game ball when we tested them are less consistent. So yeah. I, I know for a fact that those game ball are less consistent than, let's say, a traditional plastic cord game ball steel. Yes. But again, you know, what, what you're not seeing, particularly at that sort of distance, is utterly hopeless patterns you know, corkscrew, donuts, whatever. Oh, of course, no, they're, they're, they're still killing patterns. It's just being utterly pernickety where those first two are almost perfect 50 yard yard patterns. On these two, you've got a big hole and another hole. And on this one, you've got three sort of smaller patch holes. Yes. But I think you said you could have pulled that first, that, that short little bit where the pattern's on the left. Yeah. But. Uh, and again, I mean, it has to be said to keep it in context that, that shotgun patterning to, to get any really, I say hard and fast, you've got, to but to get, you've got to do at least 10 shots, which, you know, patently we haven't. So uh, just pulling one out of the ether and hanging too much on it is not something that we're going to do. No, but then is, I've always thought of the flip side of that is that if that was the it's cartridge, a snapshot in time, is it? It could be that shot that you've just taken at the bird. Yes. And yeah, and you'll never know. It's about, so it is all just about the sort of average of consistencies. My conclusion, all right, is that they both have their place and both have merit. Yeah. Both of these are clearly good killing cartridges, pattern-wise. I have tested the, the game balls. I honestly haven't shot the Elys yet, but I, I know plenty of people who have and have been taking out the pigeons. And I've seen plenty of footage and they, they shoot and kill stuff. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's an easy thing, isn't it? The balls come out the end and hit a bird and as long as they're going fast enough and carry enough energy, that bird will die. Yes, uh, I, I suppose what, all it remains now to do as, as the final part is just to take, particularly with the semi-auto and, uh, and the pump, just to whip the barrel off, have a look and see what's up it, give it a clean and uh, double check for any marks. Sounds good. Let's go back to the workshop. Which I'm not anticipating, but let's go and do it anyway. <laughs> so let's just pick this up out the grass. This is a fired Ely. Really surprises me that that top is still bound together. That top is still bound together. And this isn't one of the ones we put in water because it's not yet sticky. But, um, fascinating. That's all I can say about that, fascinating. Don't, I don't, generally don't thought those it, wings would have opened up. Well, don't know what it tells us, but there that, it is. Not a lot without <laughs> testing plenty, but Another parallel between that and the game ball is the game ball will sometimes stay together and sometimes blow apart. I guess these could be less consistent, seeing as I, we've seen them open up as well as they go through the air. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's something. So before we start, let's have a, a quick observation of our mulchy wad. Um, I'm just have a proper look at that. It is well and truly on its way to disappearing into the water. I ain't keen on drinking that right now. No. But I'm gonna. Yeah, I've got a slimy strand in my mouth. Excellent. It doesn't taste poisonous. Does that count for anything? It does taste very sweet though. No, you can put one on your coffee later. So observationally speaking on the cleanliness, on the SBE2 it actually is visually cleaner, but we did shoot a game ball out of it um, as the last cartridge. It's not entirely fair. The Supernova has those sort of darker little bauble chunks, if you like, but something that's synonymous between the two, where they're both long chambered guns, is that they both quite clearly, after where the cartridge stops, have a very defining ring of fouling. Of course, my presumption is that is just the back of the plastic where it first hits that rubbing off. That's mm. my guess there, where there's fire behind it. If it doesn't react well to water, I can't imagine it's that. It's, I can imagine it's quite temperature sensitive. So plastic fouling and fouling happens regardless of what cartridge you should use. The big question is, is how easy it is to clean out, right? Uh, yep, so let's find that out now. We're gonna go with no solvent, no solution to start with and just give it a quick. Right, 
half a dozen passes of a brush, 90% of that plastic fouling or fouling after the length of the cartridge in the chamber and the 14 cones and the barrels is gone. Yep. you agree? Absolutely. Which leads me to believe that if I put a tiny bit of solvent in there and gave it a proper scrub, <coughs> um, it would all be gone. Yes, I mean, what I'm used to sort of comparing that with, I think just a couple more cleans with a with a paper wad and a, and a clean brush will get rid of the rest of it. Yeah, and of course, I say, if you put a bit of solvent in, it would go twice yeah. as quick. So it cleans easy. It doesn't muck your barrels like everyone says it does. It's not dangerous if you drop it in water for five seconds. In fact, if you leave it in for an hour and 20 and shoot it a few minutes after, it's perfectly safe and the pattern looks perfectly good. The only thing that would be nice to put it over a chronograph, but another day. It doesn't score your barrels because you've been putting it through your guns and unsurprisingly, the bores look perfectly polished. I'm hoping it's safe to drink seeing as I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your, your verdict. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You know, I was hoping there'd be a clear winner between that and the game ball because that's kind of where I was coming in with my head that I'd like to find out because everybody, if you ask them on any steel cartridge, let alone a steel cartridge with a odd wad, has a really strong opinion, even if they haven't used it. But I've heard X is what I've heard and I've made a lot of phone calls about these. They were both good. I, I couldn't put one above the other. They both have their their benefits and their positives, I'd use it. I would definitely use it. I, I wouldn't be put off from using it. No, and, and from my point of view, in the sense that uh, I, I have a slightly more than tenuous connection with Ely's, which is why your viewpoint has more validity than mine, <laughs> but I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, given the brutality of the test, sticking a cartridge in a mug, mug of water and leaving it there for an hour, um, I'm pretty sure that if the thing was going to suffer from the consequences of that, it would have done so. And that was one of the cartridges you'd already taken out in the rain three times. Absolutely. So, from, from a personal point of view... You're I'm, not going to die from this cartridge. No, I'm impressed. I am very impressed. In terms of killing results, they do kill, from what I understand, although my personal relationship with that is, is fairly minimal, unfortunately. I do hope to change that. Steel is always less good than lead. Ballistically, it cannot compete. So I think anybody who is going to bring up the whole lead and steel argument can go away because it doesn't make much of a difference. What we're comparing this with is other steels. Yeah. And on patterns and certainly with the game, or at least in performance from my perspective, they perform just as well as every other steel shot I've ever shot. My main drawing conclusion from all of this is that you should at least go and try these cartridges. Steel is coming. We will have to use steel in the future. That's pretty much everyone can agree on that and it will not just be confined to the wild fowlers. Get behind Ely, support what they're doing. Get behind Game Ball, support what they're doing. Anybody who is developing for the future deserves our support. They do kill well. Yeah, you're not gonna go out and shoot high pheasants with them, but you'll shoot 55 yard pheasants, which is still an impressive bird either way. If you're shooting over water, please use them uh, because Chucking plastic into the environment is doing the shooting cores no good whatsoever. And that's that's what I have to say. Give them a go. Absolutely. From my from my perspective, Ely, VIP Steel, Pro Eco Wad, it's a winner. <laughs>